Welcome to the Penelope Palazzo Pants by Scorned Clothing. I'm going to go over a few things while the video plays my list of materials. The thing that you're going to want to determine after you've put together your pattern pieces is the inseam measurement. Uh, this is the highest point on the inside of your leg to the floor. The, the measurement will determine how long or short you decide to make your pants. Measure yourself and determine your inseam measurement. If it is shorter than 29 inches or 74 centimeters, subtract the difference from the bottom of the pant leg. If it is longer than 29 inches, 74 centimeters, add the difference to the bottom of the pant leg. Use a straight edge to follow the seams. In both cases, make sure to add one inch to your total measurement for the turning up of the blind hem at the end. When you start off to go cut out all your pieces, you're going to want to make sure that if you've got any kind of printed or patterned fabric, that you line it up with itself and the grain line mark on the pattern. You can put the fabric over top of one another, like um, like I've done here in the video. I've got two pieces and I've lined up my pin striping on both sides so that they match with each other. And then I've put the pattern over top with the grain line on one of the pin stripes so that I know that this is coming out 90 degrees, totally straight, exactly the way it should be. Uh, you'll need to cut two pieces of each pant leg. That's um, pattern piece A and pattern piece B, two of each. Mirror images of each other. You can see I'm lining up the inseams with each other front and back now. And that's just my own personal preference. I, I wanted to show it so that you could see the um, process going into lining up a print. Uh, yes, so two pieces of each A and B, mirror images left and right. Um, so you'll end up with four pant leg pieces all together. Right here, I've just made sure that my pieces are on grain. So they'll be 90 degrees. Um, because of the nature of the fabric I've chose, I didn't actually have to have them all sit the same way up like I would have with my pant legs. Anyway, uh, you're going to need to cut two pieces of the uh, center front C and the center back D pieces. Cut two of each of those and then cut four pairs, or four pairs, four pieces, two pair of pattern piece E, the waistband side front, and four pairs or eight pieces of the pattern piece F, the waistband side back. I didn't get my footage of me cutting out my um, medium weight fusible stabilizer, but it's not like you're missing much. Um, you just cut one piece of C and D and two mirror image pieces of E and F. When I went to go uh, iron these out. It's it's rather simple when you figure out the stabilizer, but I am lining them up so that I can just make sure that it, there's no possible way I could mess this up because I want mirror image pairs. And then iron to to the specifications of your your fabric that you're using. And you'll notice that I'm being meticulous in putting them all back. <laughs> That's just for my own comfort. Uh, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the, the legs. It doesn't matter if you start with the front or the back, but put right sides together and pick 
two of the same pieces, either A or B, and then sew together at the front crotch seam with your desired seam allowance. And that's it. Do that to both. Then you're going to want to open them up, I guess. Yes, open them up so that they look like pant legs <laughs> rather than just two pieces stuck together. And put both the front pieces and then the back pieces together, right sides together. Line up your side seams. If you've once again got patterned or printed fabric, you're going to have to line those up. You don't need an invisible zipper foot, but it is handy. This is a good example of one. It's also a good example of uh, how to check to make sure that it's on your machine properly. Anytime you get uh, an aftermarket foot, make sure that um, you figure out where center is for its needle hole. It might not be center for your machine, as well as uh, move your needle up and down to make sure that the clearance through the hole isn't obstructed like on this one. I recommend installing invisible zippers into both side seams. If you choose to only have one, simply sew the other side seam normally. Lay the zipper face down, that's the zipper pull side down, inside the seam allowance on the right side of the fabric. Align the teeth with the seam allowance exactly. Place the top stops of the zipper just below the seam allowance for the meeting with the waistband. You can pin in place and then open the zipper That groove right there is what you're going to sew into. You can pin along this whole way, making sure that your teeth are in line with the seam allowance if you like. I just folded it over there to show you. That's how you check to make sure that you've got the right sides together. Is That's what you'll see when the pant leg is closed. Your teeth, if using an invisible zipper foot like I am, should be taken up by the groove on the opposite side of your seam allowance. Sew all the way down until you can't sew anymore, back tack, and finish. Each and every time you've done a pass on your invisible zipper, check to make sure that it works then do the other side. Same thing. Go as far as you can, stop, back tack, test to make sure it works. Then we've got to finish the uh, bottom of the seam. You're going to want to put on a regular zipper foot now. And uh, don't put it on the wrong side of the needle like I did. I like to pin my seam allowance all the way to one side marking at where I had originally stopped in my seams for the invisible zipper. I try and take up the other side to keep it so that I can see where I'm going with it. Yeah, watch right here. This is this is pretty funny. I realize what I've done right away. Oh! <laughs> if you've ever done this before and you're using a zipper foot, just leave your um, needle in the in the fabric partially and then switch sides. It's not that big a deal, but it's annoying. 
Try and get as close as you possibly can to your original seams with your invisible zipper because you want them to mesh with the seam allowance for what you've allotted exactly and end without any puckers. No, oh, that's not bad. And then uh, check. Always check. And then press. Give it a press. I like to press the other seams while I'm here as well. I always try and line up my pieces so that I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm not going to mess it up. It's the same method that I used for ironing the stabilizer and that I'll use for pinning the rest of everything. Line up the pieces with the stabilizer and the pieces without to be mirror images of each other. The two D pieces should be in the center and the four F pieces should be on either side of the D pieces while being opposite one another. I encourage you to use the method that I'm using here because it's the most foolproof method I've personally found and trust me if I can mess it up I will. <laughs> and then just uh, pen or clip them in place right sides together always remembering your seam allowance that you have decided to to use. I always like to try and pull up my tails. It's a good habit to get into. So the stabilized pieces and the not stabilized pieces uh, right sides together along the side seams. And then we've got to make a channel for our boning. So we're going to take our seams and we're going to push them to the outside. Um, and then we're going to sew it down more than a quarter inch away from the original seam. This will create the channel that we use to insert the boning. Do this for both the stabilized pieces and the ones without. We're only inserting channel into the stabilized pieces, but we want to anchor the other pieces so that they're neat and tidy. Now take the piece, pieces with the stabilizer and the ones without and sew them right sides together leaving open the seam that will connect with the legs. That's the bottom seam. We're going to sew sides along the top and back down. That's it. Then we're going to clip the corners so that there's nothing bulky when we go to turn it right side round. I ended up having to flip it back over and trim that center, center seam there. 
You don't need to do anything other than just clip it. You may not need to have that step, but I ended up needing it because it wouldn't, it just wouldn't fold the way I wanted it to. It, w it wasn't um, coming right side out completely. Yeah, pin or clip. I like my clips. I really highly recommend them. I think they're awesome. I bought them to use with leather and then I just ended up using them for just about everything. Yeah, this is where I get frustrated and go back in and clip that. You don't have to like clip anything out, just make little snips in towards the seam allowance. You can also do this while pressing if you're inclined to and probably doing it the proper way then go ahead and press. I just prefer to roll the seam outward with my fingers and then I'm going to top stitch it so I don't. I do, I do all my pressing later. And then we insert the boning. What you want to do is go all the way in and then mark where you're going to pull back out. So either with a pen, I do it with just my thumbnail. I grab it and then I pull it back out my chosen seam allowance and then I cut it off flat at the fabric where it meets. That way when I smush it back in I've got my seam allowance remaining on the fabric without any boning that I have to sew through. Just do that again, insert, and then pull back out the width of your seam allowance, smush them back in. Now we're going to want to sew a quarter inch or more, preferably more, like 5 sixteenths or whatever, away from the edge of our fabric so that we can create the channel for our boning while top stitching. So we're going to go a quarter inch away top stitch and then end a quarter inch away so that we can insert the boning afterward. It's nice if you've got the sewable boning because you can just top stitch right over top of it. That's handy. And then insert the boning along the sides of the waistband back exactly like you would have before. Same all the way in, pull back out the seam allowance and mount, clip off, and then push it in so that you've got your seam allowance. You don't need a serger. Um, you could just sew it shut and then finish the edge with a zigzag if you don't have a serger. And then we're going to do the same, same sort of thing to the front waistband section. We're going to line up the pieces with stabilizer. We're going to line up the pieces with stabilizer on one side and the pieces without on the other. Maybe mirror images of each other. The two C pieces should be in the center and the four E pieces should be on either side of the C pieces while being opposite one another. And then either clip or sew, or sorry, <laughs> clip or sew, clip or pin so that uh, your side seams are together, right sides facing each other. Mm -hmm. 
sew each set of three right sides together along the side seams. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did to the rear waistband pieces, um, except we're instead of pushing them to the outside, we're going to push them to the inside. We're going to push our side seams to one side and then sew the channel for our boning that needs to be more than a quarter inch. And we're going to do the exact same thing to the non-stabilized piece because we want it to match. Now we're going to sew these two pieces right sides together, leaving open the bottom seam that we're going to use to attach the legs. So sew across the sides, the top, and then back down. Once again, we must clip the edges so that when we turn it inside out, or sorry, right side out, it's uh, not bulky and we get a nice clean edge. You will need to clip in towards the seam along the seam allowance for the top because otherwise you won't get a good turn on it. So clip, clip, clip all the way along. Make sure and trim any corners, including the top corner, because that'll get, even though it's a mild, mild angle, it'll get bulky on the inside if you don't. Clip to either side of your boning channels very closely. Now you can turn it right side out. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the other one, which is um, you can iron it at this stage. You wouldn't be wrong to do so. I don't bother. I'm a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible person. Um, the proper way to go about things would be to iron at this stage as well. Press it. I don't. I'm going to top stitch it and I do all of my pressing at the end. So I just roll it in my fingers and bring it out to a nice flat edge so that I can top stitch it. It's how I prefer to do it. It's not necessarily the right way, but it's not going to hurt anything. It's fine. And then we're going to make sure that uh, we leave pieces for our boning yet again along the side seams. When we do our top stitching, we've got to leave that quarter inch channel so that we can insert the boning along the very, very ends sides of our uh, waistband section. So leaving a quarter inch at the side and then top stitching all along the top really close. I try and get as close as possible within a few millimeters. I'm Canadian, so I'm going to switch back and forth between different measurements. If you're wondering, look it up. <laughs> uh. 
Now, now I'm going to go through the same process to insert the boning as I used for the other ones. If your boning has a curve to it like mine does, I suggest having the uh, curve be towards the outside of the of the garment. In other words, if you were to look at it from the outside, the curve would be con concave rather than convex. Now I'm going to finish that edge. Once again, you don't need a serger to do this. You could just straight stitch it and then finish the seam allowance with a zigzag to keep it from fraying if, if you don't have a serger. Now is when I sew up my inside flaps that are going to cover up the spaces for the grommets. Make sure that you leave one of the short sides open. Sew up one short side and both long sides and they will have a, a right and a left. It doesn't matter which one you choose, just make sure they pair up. And then trim your edges so that when you turn it inside out, it is nice and flat and there's no bulk. Turn it inside out. Whee! And then clip or pin to flatten. Once again, if you are being super proper way of doing things, you could iron at this point. Do some pressing if you'd like. If you wish to do that before you do your top stitching, you're more on top of doing things the right way than I am. I've never had a problem doing it this way. I'm just going to roll my fingers to bring the seam edge to the outside as much as possible. Use my stitch ripper to poke that little <laughs> corner out there and then clip. I love my clips. You're going to have to finish the uh, seam either before or after top stitching. If you have a serger, do it after. If you don't have a serger, I would suggest turning in the edges of your little flaps and then top stitching that along with the top stitching of the whole thing. Uh, I have a serger, so I don't bother doing that. I just top stitch it and then serge the ends, but that's what you can do if you don't have one. And then top stitch, make it pretty. Do it to both of them, obviously, I hope. Alright, now we've, we're going to attach the waistband to the pant legs. So pick whichever side you're working with first. I decided to do the front and then make sure that your side seams with the invisible zippers are open. If you only did one side then don't worry about it, just open the one side. Uh, I started at the center. I definitely recommend that you start at the center seam, line up the two centers and either pin or clip working your way to the outside edges as much as humanly possible. You might need to do a little bit of like fudging and adjusting because um, the tops of the invisible zippers also haven't been completely finished, which is what we're going to do here. So make sure that uh, when you're pinning at the edges, the top side of the invisible zipper is matched up well and turned turned in so that the seam allowance is on the inside and the zipper teeth are on the right side of the fabric. Yeah, right there I show you kind of turn that. And yeah, working towards the outside edges, just be patient, clip and pin, or clip or pin. <laughs> Make sure that your kitties don't walk across your fabric. Now 
uh, and then do the exact same thing to the other side, whichever side you didn't start with. For for me, it's uh, now I'm moving on to the back side. And do the same thing. Uh, start at the center and work your way to the outer edges. You'll have the exact same issue with the invisible zipper. And just make sure the top stops are um, almost right at the edge. Don't sew over top of them. Put them like just a hair, like for you um, Americans, that's about a sixteenth of an, a of an inch down. For the rest of the world, about a millimeter. See, I kind of do the edge and then I move over to the center. And then just move along as best you can, making making for certain that everything's lined up the way it should be. Pay special attention to your centers because you can you can fudge a lot, but if your centers aren't lined up, it's going to look really weird. So make sure that you've got your centers lined up real good. There we go. Time to sew her up. Yeah, and pay special attention to the finishing of your invisible zippers at the sides. If you've got the edges turned, it shouldn't be hard at all. When I came to the front, I uh, ended up clipping that. I wasn't sure where it was going to end up, and I wanted to clip it exactly. Clipped it right at the needle edge so that then, after I had uh, clipped it, I could fold it over and the needle would move right over top of it without any puckers. We're going to want to do the top stitching now. You don't have to switch to a double needle. I did. I think it just adds another um, nice little flattening to the seams. You can do it with a straight straight stitch as or um, single needle as much as you want. Once again, always test your zippers in between. Uh, I decided to pin. I was getting a little bit of rolling where I didn't want it, so I wanted to make sure that um, I was going to be nice and flat and there wasn't going to be any any weird pieces sticking up where they shouldn't be. So I just went and pinned down my, my sections. You could iron as well, or press, iron press, you could do that. It would work just as well. And then top stitch making sure to get the edges as well. You can start start in a little bit and then back up. I find that's much easier. I uh, <laughs> turned around with my double needle without... Yeah, <laughs> ignore that. That's not good practice. <laughs> Go ahead. And then if you need to, you can pin the back. I didn't need to pin the back. It didn't have the same issue. So I just went and sewed right, right over top. We're going to do some hand sewing finishing now. I call those bra clips. If you call them something else. I'm sorry, I don't know what they're called, but uh, 
now that you've top stitched and basically done all your sewing machine finishing on the invisible zippers, you'll need to give them a little anchor so that uh, they stay in place and it's easier to zip them up and down with their pieces closed. So align these so that they're not pulling too tight or falling open and then hand stitch them on just behind the zipper top so that they can't be seen. Just like that. You never even know it's there until you open it up. And then there's a special way of finishing the invisible zipper ends. Just anchor it right where that uh, where we finished it. Go a little bit further down to the end of the zipper and then always working within the seam allowance and not actually the pant leg itself, just the seam allowance. Go through and flatten the, uh, the zipper to the seam allowance, like so that it's the way the zipper would normally fall if it was going to function. And then sewing through the zipper tape and either side of the seam allowance, go over top of the zipper teeth and back down through the zipper tape and the seam allowance on the other side. And then go underneath in through the seam allowance to the other side of the seam allowance, just above the seam. Do that quite a few times over and over and that will anchor your invisible zipper bottom to the side of the pant leg without any puckers and then when you go to hang onto it to pull it up and down it's not going to be flapping all over the place or conversely um, falling away from the seam and itching the inside of your leg. You also don't have to cut it off or worry about it making your pants fall weird because sometimes if you cut these off and finish them another way they look weird on the outside of the pants and you don't have anything to hang on to when you're trying to zip up and zip down it just feels really flimsy finally um we're going to do the grommets if you've got a uh, size larger than medium so large extra large um you're going to need four on either side. I'm marking three. That's what you're going to need for size medium and every size smaller than that. They're roughly an inch apart, but it's up to you to center them and make sure that they look good. Bec uh, I personally find it easier to center three because you can find the exact center of your um, middle button or middle hole and work off your measurements off of that. I suggest a punch, but make sure that your punch is at least half as wide as the grommets that you're inserting. Because if you make them the same size, um, it's not going to work. <laughs> you, you really need to make sure that they're smaller and then work them through a little bit because they're much sturdier that way. If you make them the same size as the grommet, they're basically going to fray and fall open and it's going to be really bad. And then follow whatever installation instructions you get for your grommets. That's rather important. Uh, right here, I'm using a grommet, not an eyelet. Grommets are two pieces, eyelets are one. I definitely recommend grommets, two piece grommets. And I've got a little uh, grommet setter mallet that will um, smush the one side of my grommet in over top of the other side of it, securing them down. Yeah, you should be able to find uh, instructions on how to install grommets depending upon this uh, type that you got, which will be similar to this. Now that you've got the metal pieces in and you're not going to punch through anything, is the time to insert these little flaps. We're almost done, oh my god. So when you pin these up, you just want to make sure that the way the laces are going to pull on the eyelets allows your inner flap to not show on the right side as demonstrated by my little wiggle 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 right there yeah you just want it to not show through to the other side the it's designed to 
just hide the opening of your skin where, where it ties across there. This is a, a blind hem foot. I recommend using it for the blind hem. You don't need it. Blind hem is a stitch, not a foot. And how you do it is you fold up your one, your amount. I've folded it up an inch, and then you fold the whole thing over so that you're stitching on the salvage or trimmed edge of the actual hem that you've turned up rather than the pant leg that will be showing. I'm not entirely going to go through a blind hem tutorial in this. Um, if you want it explained further, go ahead and look it up. It's not complicated. And then finish both both legs like that and press. I, uh, I don't show the cutting of my ties in this. If you want two ties, just cut your 1.5 yards, meters, whatever in half, thread it through, and then you're done. Ta-da! Go wear your pants. <laughs>